Continuing, there's the Ava Ish Veisha, the love between a man and a woman, the relationship between a man and a woman, is a husband and a wife. So, we were saying yesterday how she has to realize that even though her husband's not perfect, her wife has to help him fulfill his tikkun, Hashem, not for no reason, put him and her together. She, he says, it will give chizuk, it will give you strength to be able to honor him, just like a person has to think, what is it similar to? Just like a king, imagine there's a king. He likes somebody, like Parol and Yosef. He made Yosef into this big officer, the second in command. And even if people didn't like him, Yosef, people had to honor him because the king said to do so. So too, a woman, she has to honor her husband. What if the king made a Zav or Ish Sarua? What if a guy is a leper or a sick man and the king decided to make him second in command? No, everybody in the kingdom has to respect him regardless of his status. So too, a woman who has a husband, even if she thinks that there's something wrong with him or he's not perfect or, you know, she says, he's sick, Rabbi, he's sick, right? Nonetheless, since the king made him the second in command, meaning to say, Hashem put you with this man, there's a reason. And therefore, a person has to give him honor nonetheless. Oh, just as a woman is careful with the three designated mitzvot for women, which is nida, the chala, and lighting the Shabbat candles, so too she should take to her heart just as serious the mitzvah of honoring her husband. Because Hashem commanded this, and Hashem commanded that as well. So they're both the same. So a person has to make sure to fulfill the decree of the king of the world, which is to honor her husband. As the sages tell us in Tanel Yebeliyahu, says the Yebeliyahu, it's Ishak Shera Ben-Nashim, a truly virtuous woman is the one that does the will of her husband and helps him grow spiritually. As we know, the Gemara says, the says about Baba ben Buta, right? The Gemara says a story where there was a man who was from Babel and married a woman from Israel. And they spoke different, ki- different types of slang in Bab- Babylon that they didn't speak in Israel. So he told her to make me, uh, you know, uh, a, a whole lang- a whole big uh, bucket full, a whole big load of uh, lentil soup, whatever it was. So she made a huge, huge pot. And he says, are you kidding me? I didn't mean that literally. It's a slang. It just means make me some, you know. So the next time he said, you didn't want to make the same mistake. So he said to her, make me a few barley corn size of, uh, of this food. And she literally made like a gourmet meal, like mamash, just two bites of that food. And again, he got upset with her and he said, no, I, I, you don't understand, it's a slang, it, it's just a saying, it doesn't mean literally so little. He was so mad at her that she kept doing this. So what did he do? He said, you know, you should go and, and break the, 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 the candle on the, on, the, on, on, the, on the buta. So what did that mean? He meant a word that meant uh, fruit. And she thought it meant candle. They misunderstood each other again. And she thought buta means baba be buta. So she went to go find the Tana, the sage, Baba and Buta, and she cracked the, the candle on his head. And he said in the shiur, what are you doing, lady? What, what is this? He said, what do you mean? My husband sent me, told me you're not coming home until I break the candle on Baba and Buta's head. So he let her do it. He didn't get upset at her. And he said, blessed are you that you do the will of your husband. So you see, the Baba and Buta, he praised her and she, he viewed her as a virtuous woman. Even though her husband asked her to do something that people would think is, uh, you know, outrageous. She said, my husband's honor comes first, and she was willing to do it. So you see how a person, a woman, has to go out of her way to go and show respect to the husband, whether they're great or whether they're small, whether they're not so great. But unfortunately, he says, a big problem in the house is that women fight with their husbands over this, or they cannot provide for the needs of the home. And he says, this is a big foolishness. Whichever way you put it, it's always going to lead to a mistake. It's always going to lead to fighting. That what? If her husband's not so wealthy and he cannot afford his basic means, so he already has pain and anxiety about the situation. He already knows that he doesn't make enough money. And now you fight with him and now you complain to him and you make it worse for him. And now he's going to be even more embarrassed to reveal to his wife, I don't have how enough to pay for whatever you're asking me for. So therefore what? Why should a woman go and add uh, salt to the wound. Why should you go f- make a bigger fire? And you should go and seek comfort, through, give him comfort through sweet words. She should say to him, 
Don't trouble yourself. This you have a lack of money. Hashem will not reject us forever. Hashem will give us parnasa one day. Don't worry. We believe in you. One day we will be sated with food. One day Hashem will give us parnasa and we will have. A woman has to understand, every person has to understand, not everyone merits two tables. What do you mean two tables? Some people get Olam Abba. And they're like, is a little bit, you know, difficult. Not everybody's like Rebbe, who used to have every delicacy on his table, and he was a big tzaddik that he had to Olam Abba and Olam it's, it's, it's not every person, it's not expected. The wife says, no, I want my husband to be a tzaddik, to bring nets, to come home, take the kid to school, and make sure it takes me on vacation three times a year, and he has to buy for me this coat, that purse, First, they goes in the, this and that. I want this kind of furnishings. I want the you know cake and water filter. I want the heated floors. I want the, this Lexus in my driveway. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You have to. That's what a husband's supposed to do. I'm sorry, woman. You have to understand. Not everyone is okay to have all that. And some people they only have olama ze. They don't have olama ba. Some people they have only olama ba. They don't have olama ze. But sometimes there's husbands. Oh, but so and so's husband has all that plus. Okay, not everybody gets to be two shulchanot, to have two tables. Some people yes, some people no. Everybody has a different decree. Everybody has a different tikkun. So a person has to not, not blame, don't blame the husband. Blame, the husband is trying his hardest. So why should you add fire to the wound? Therefore he says, So therefore a person has to put, pick themselves together and give thanks that Hashem, you are married, give thanks that you have what you have. But even in the situation ways where the husband is wealthy, nonetheless he's cheap. Or if he delays the, the giving her the money for whatever reason, should she this concern her? No. Rather, whatever he brings her, she should prepare for him to eat. And oh, what if he's going to get upset? That's it. There's no drinks in the fridge. There's no, there's no nice, you know, second dish, dessert. There's no, well, the pantry is empty. The fridge is empty. What's going on over here? She should say to her, what? She, he should say to him, she should say to him, From where am I going to make? From things you don't give me. If you don't give me money, where am I going to have all these things? This, kushale, this is what you give. This is what we have. And it's not my fault. So therefore, you see that the Pelayu is saying you have to avoid confrontation as much as you can and don't let finances become a big hassle because it's something that is not so significant. And rather, the husband should realize on his own, if you don't make enough money, you should push yourself to make money. She doesn't need reminders from the wife. He's going to go and put, her da- put him down. There's going to be strife between them. And even when he makes money, but he's being cheap, then she should let things go as, as usual. And when he gets upset with himself, how the house is not taken care of, she'll say, listen, it's not my fault. I did what the best I could. I didn't want to tell you anything, but listen, this bill's unpaid, and this we don't have food in the house. The, the, we, you know, we didn't go to Costco in a long time. I don't have money. You didn't give me money to do all these things. So then he'll be he'll only blame himself and not have to fight with you. That's the chokhmah of the sages that a person, whenever you want to rebuke somebody, the best way is to put it in a situation where they'll rebuke themselves, where they'll realize the mistake themselves. When you tell somebody, they get defensive. But when you get to get them understanding themselves, they'll rebuke themselves. That's the best. Baruch na'olam.